at all. Yes, sir, Mr. President. Chuck, I just want to check on you, Webster. Uh, to be sure, you know, I got the report from Dean, you know, about these five violations and all the rest, and I said, well, I'll stick by him if he wants to fight. Well, it's a little bit like Bill Casey's situation. Uh, what he has, Mr. President, he had a, a very minor thing, which was a, where they filed a tax lien. It was $200, but that was nothing. I don't but forget that one. Yeah, the other about the others, where, where he, after audit, they disagreed with deductions he had taken. Right. Uh, and I don't know all the details, but he said, uh, that, you know, he argued it out, and they had an audit, 67, 66, and uh, he was in those days making a lot of money, and uh, so five or six thousand dollars. Uh, deficiency. Yeah. My point is this: uh, Do we stick with him? Well, I I think he's the best man for the job, Mr. President. Yeah, let's okay. start with that. Fine. Okay. I think he's the best man for the job. Let me, however, disqualify myself in one respect. I've known Webster very, very well, and if he goes into the IRS, I've told him, and I don't I don't stand to gain from this, but I've told him that I would watch his practice for him. I would I would help him, you know, by taking right. taking the young associates out of his office and just trying right. for him. So in one sense I suppose I have a right, we're not forget all that for financial interest. For that should we stand by him or not? I would, yes sir. I could fine. All right, we're standing can. by him. So well, the point is I told Schultz that, you know, all these assholes that want to run away from people. But don't forget, you know, he was ordered it uh, during the time the Democrats were in here and when he was a very active Goldwater Republican, then a Baker Republican, right. and, uh, and ran loyals for Nixon. You understand? Yeah. I'm all for him, and, and I just don't, don't want him to take the fight and not run into the situation I did with the, you know, Hainsworth and Carswell, where they didn't stand up and fight. Oh, I, I think oh, I, they'd have a hell of a job. You see, the the reason, I'm sorry about the tax bar and your former partner, Alexander. Oh, screw Alexander. I don't give a shit what he thinks. Well, I don't, couldn't care less. Webster's published more goddamn books on tax law mm -hmm. that uh, mm -hmm. some of them here, and he holds these annual conferences. It totally qualified professionally. What the hell, the guy? Yeah. The trouble is the guy's from East Tennessee, and he's not right. from the, right. and al although he went to Harvard Law School, he's not, right. the, he's not the stereotype that right. the Cravath, Swain, and right. Fine. But your, your advice is to, to go forward. Fine. Yes, sir, although I, I do qualify. I mean, I want you to know that... that uh, It'll be a hell of a fight. Well, no, 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 no. I want you to know that, that since nominated, since proposing him to you, I told him I would take over his practice. Well, I don't give a shit about that. that I, I don't give one goddamn about that. I take over his practice. But I don't, believe me. Cause, oh, I don't give a damn about that. I hope you do take over his practice. Now, the second point is with regard to our friend from Illinois. Yes, sir. Uh, Richard, sure. I asked him whether he wanted anything. He said, well, he told Chuck and this and that and the rest, but I, I haven't heard a damn thing. Well, the thing he'd like to do, uh, which I mentioned briefly uh, to Bob and John, and I don't know whether I mentioned to you, that Keeper's Game was the FCC. He'd like to go on that if he could become chairman. Of course, he'd be tremendous. He'd, uh, Why not? Oh, he'd jolt the hell out of the network. Well, he, he's in the communication. The FCC. Yeah, he'd be great at that. And uh, the difficulty is we've got Birch there. What the hell are we going to get rid of him? Well, Birch has to leave by the end of this year in order to become, uh, if he's going to run for the Senate in Arizona. And he says he is. So well, why don't we just put see Bradshaw on yes, and, then, and then promote him up? That would be the way Bradshaw hates him, doesn't he? Oh, he despises the networks. He would do, He would kill him. He would do what they went to. Jesus, I would die with a guy like mine. Right. Follow through on that. Well, yeah. He's got enough money that he doesn't have to. Yeah. Follow through on that with with her people, if that's what he wants, that is what he's going to get. Well, he would be great at, uh, at that. We, you see, we can put him into the Nicholas Johnson vacancy. When Nick Johnson, the Democrat, the crazy but that is in June. June. That's right. But in June, we put him in that and then uh, uh, move him up to Birch's spot when Birch leaves. And right. uh, Dave is uh, wealthy enough that he, he wouldn't... Uh, All right, fine. Let's work that out. That's what I want to do. All okay. Right. That was, I hope your uh, leg is alright, Mr. President. Oh, shit. Nothing wrong with that. Well, I noticed you limping a little bit when you left tonight. That's a... Well, I've got this... I mean, got a pretty bad cut, but it's all right. But, you know, these people, the second night, the third night, and this night, my my daughters, as I told you, and, and Mrs. Dixon said, you know, they're so different from the people we saw the first night, whom they love, because they're all of our old friends. That's right. But these, these have got, you know, they've got verbs. They've got verbs. You know, they're schmaltz, and, you know, and... Uh, Call it what the Jewish, the Jewish people call it. That's bad. Yeah. They really have it too. Oh, what? They came to the line, you know. They cry. There were tears in 
Carol, who seconded you down there today, right. with his wife, and he's just, God bless the president. Did they have a good time, though? Did, oh, you know, you see, all they do is shake hands, with, but I hope they get them nice, you know, fresh things were lovely, Mr. President. Fresh and I had all the rest, and the oh, music, and you know, everything. Well, it was beautiful. Of course, Mrs. Nixon has done such a spectacular job with the, with the house this year. It's, it, yeah, everything is perfect, yes. Everything. They all felt good about coming, did they? They felt they felt great about coming. And the thing that interests me, and maybe we're still in the glow of the election, I don't know, these, these people would, would go to their, they, they, they'd march off a cliff for you. It's incredible. That, that over at Blair House last night, the conversation during dinner and then the, the feeling afterwards and uh, everybody coming up. And, you know, you know, the difference with the Republicans is that and it's terrible because uh, I don't know. Been a Republican all we know them, we love them. But they're always bitching. They're always negative. They never swore that, like you said, when you went to your old club and found that they were always bitching. And why should they be bitching? I know. Good God, I'm fighting for their goddamn causes. But these people, what were they bitching about that night? What was it? No, they were bitching that we've been too packed. Too, no, no, too cozy, to, too, too friendly with labor that you play golf with meanie, but never with the business people. And oh, screw up. Well, Jesus. Yeah, I know. That's awful. Awful. But this crowd last night, uh, God, they are just, they are wonderful. I mean, those those labor guys, and, and they're all, they're in our corner. I, I just, uh, uh, we'll get no question about Well, all of them, old Fitz, for example, I had a lot of his people, and I mentioned him to everybody. Oh, yeah. Hell, they all know. <laughs> and Joe T and the rest. Well, we're going to have them forever. Yes, they're, they're great. Oh, we are. Oh, no doubt about that. My God, I, I, that's one organization that I'm going to see that we control. Uh, all right. Fitz and I have already started to clean out. We're getting rid of Gibbons. We're going to put... Uh, the thing that brings me was what Brennan said when he said, you know, he went game to the line. He said, I think you should know that I went to eight offices. <laughs> I didn't have your picture up. I, put your, I said, I put your picture up. As he said, I put your picture up. Well, now, God damn it, is that really true? Here we have had Schultz, and we've had Schultz and... Hodgson, both Nixon Miles. Why the hell didn't they put my picture on? Come tell me. They don't think this way, Mr. President. But let me tell you what Brennan did. He went over there. And he walked through a few offices. He couldn't find your picture. So he turned to Bob Armeo, very, very bright young Italian lad, out of Rockefeller's office. And he's bringing down here with him. And he said, Bob, go tell uh, the front office, Hodgson, that by 9 tomorrow morning, I want the president's picture in every office in the Labor Department. By 9 tomorrow morning. <laughs> he said, huh? They were running through the halls trying to clip out pictures out of magazines. <laughs> they ran out of pictures of the president. But it's an order, and it's it's in effect right now. And yeah, Hodgson said, Jesus, you know, he went, of course he went long. Hodgson didn't do it. No, but he never, he'd never think of it. Brennan goes over there, and he says, by God, we're going to have American flags. Right. We're going to have American flags throughout this building. We're going to have pictures of the president of the United States. And there'll be no pictures of Kim. Yeah, and you see, Schultz didn't have any. And neither did Hodgson. And both are totally loyal. Well, he, he, what the hell's the trouble? Well, you remember what I told you when we talked about labor, that somebody has to go in there and clean them out. And uh, he's, he's got 100 people that he's targeted to remove. Uh, BLS has, has now been, uh, Moore's gone. Is it? Oh, yes, he's right. And we accepted. You accepted his resignation. And uh, right. we cleaned out all but one. We had to leave one assistant secretary in. And, of course, us three, depending on what counts it is, we'll keep in. If he wants to stay, which I think he does, uh, we'll Although Ussery should go over to the that job that counts now. Is. But Brennan has just gotten in there. There's going to be, he stole them all, no more pictures of Kennedy. He followed the Kennedy pictures. There'll be no more Kennedy pictures. That's right. There'll all be Nixon pictures. President Nixon wow. is the president. And the American flag will be flown in the office. <laughs> and there'll be one oh, right. Yeah, well, it's, I mean, How does Brennan feel? Was he pleased about the two evenings? Yeah, he is just so upbeat, uh, Mr. President. He feels great. And, uh, of course, he loves these kind of things. I mean, those, those dinners he loved because they, well, he, you know, he really loves tomorrow night, he'll love it too. Of course he will. And he loves what's happening, that he's being, that he's, uh, he is opening the door. Uh, and uh, uh, he knows, he knows, you know, we've changed, we're, Chuck, we're changing the whole thing. Yeah. Whoever thought four years ago, labor guys would be in this house, Isn't that you know, with their, you know, the interesting thing is, their wives and themselves, the thing that, impressed me. Most of them have tears in their eyes. Yeah. It was a goddamnedest thing. That's what my wife said. Oh, they, they were notices. And Julie, of course, is so sentimental. Said they were so nice, Daddy. They were such nice people. Well, they were. They're Republican. They're warm. They're warm. Huh? They're feeling. And they really identify with, with, well, they identify with you and, I must say, with, with, with the country. Well, uh, the country and with
with Mrs. Nixon and Julie, too. That was it, right? It's lovely because you know, those women, oh, those women, my God, a couple of them said, we'll never be the same. And uh, Mrs. Galtieri, I watched her. That was, I wish I'd, had, I'd give anything to a film of that. She was that she night, was yeah. following you and uh, as you, every move. And I watched her, and then all of a sudden a tear came down. And I went over to her, and I, I didn't know what to do, what it was. I could tell by the look in her face. And she said, I love that man. I love him. And I said, you know, so, and they all mean it. And they're just, uh, oh, they're great. It's been a, the press is having fun. They were trying to find out this afternoon, all of those witches over there. Were, yeah. We're trying to find out from the press corps, where did this list come from? And they were they were buzzing. They'd never seen yeah. a group like this coming through the White House. Well, the, this is the Jackson thing, you know? Yes, sir. People coming in, no mud in their shoes. But this is the new majority. It's the new majority. Did the press get the point? Well, I, I put it for and grabbed me, Helen Thomas, and, uh, yeah, and the bitch. that ball from Newsweek and somebody from somebody, some, bitch, right. some other bitch I've never seen. Wow. And they all said, where does this list come from? And I said, this is the this is the middle of America. This is the cross section. This is the new majority. And uh, right. they were all, how come we don't see many blacks here? And I said, well, well there were blacks. Yeah, we got about five or six, sir. I pointed them out. But they're, you know, you can tell the press are, the, this is killing the press corps, Mr. President. Is it really? Oh, sure, because what they're seeing is the Nixon majority, and they're seeing middle America coming into the White House, and these bitches who write for the Post and, and uh, the New York Times want to write about all the uh, Mrs. Tooley Foots and her minks coming into wow. New York, you know, and the, the beautiful people. All of a sudden, they see yeah. ordinary people coming in. Instead of the beautiful people of the Kennedy era, right. what they're seeing are the John McCarrolls, who's, right. who's a wedding great welder and a foreman out in the United Auto Workers plant. And the point is, the president likes them and they like him. That's right. They, oh, my God. They get that across. Yes, sir. And I, I steered a couple like McCarroll over to the press because Christ, he, I mean, he, he talks about you like... Like he talks about God, I mean, he's just so he remembers the telephone call and all the rest. Oh sure, my God, oh, God, and of course the speech, the great speech, the second speech. But you know, I, I steered, a, I tried to steer a few of those type to the press because they're, you know, they're the enthusiasts who really can, uh, right. can spell it out and and uh, they love. Well, it's it's a great thing. It's a, we're not win the press, but we're going to win these people. Oh, you've got these people. Oh, well, they are ours, and then we're going to work on all of them. Well, we just all fits. We got him, haven't we? Oh, solidly. He said, uh, he told me, he, he said, it's uh, between you and me. You, you know what he really said about this fellow? I think I did. I think I heard it. Gibbons. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I heard it. But put his, put his, uh, his wife in here. I said, uh, what happened to Gibbons? <laughs> you didn't fuck him. He wasn't with, with us. With us. Yeah. <laughs>
up there. One way or another, we'll get it up there. I'd love to. I'd just put all the frosting on, wouldn't it? Wow. But it's, uh, God, when you see people like this, uh, I love them. Yeah, when you really, it, what it really proves, Mr. President, is the wisdom of the strategy, you know, the, the issues that got these people who are standing up for the country. The, I remember when people around here thought it was kind of corny to wear that American flag. Well, God, that was the smartest thing. And, you know, I wore one tonight. Oh, <laughs> you notice a hell of a lot in the line of wearing them. And uh, the last two nights. And they noticed it, too. Oh, damn right. Uh, I mean, Bulby, Bulby was good. Yes, he was. Yeah, he was damn good. And uh, deep. But, oh, but uh, we're... we're Incidentally, we, we, we launched Scully the night today. So that the star, and that's great. Oh, great. Oh, marvelous. Those kind of 
Kennedy and tell him to get to Kennedy and say, look, for Christ's sakes, let's, let's get along for a while, and you've got your time a couple of years from now. That's what I was thinking. That, I think that's what he's, I believe that's what Kennedy is, uh, is uh, I think he's throwing out that olive branch deliberately. I think he doesn't want to tangle with us right now. And we're getting that uh, same kind of feeling from the media, you know.
American Legion, the uh, on the hard hats, the refs say, thank God we're doing what we ought to do. Right, right. Will you do that? I will do that, Mr. President. We'll get them, uh, they'll come out for us. We got, we got, we got the right ones. We've been, we've been spending time with them this week. We have them all here. We'll get Mini lined up, of course. We'll have to Mini be fine. I tell Henry that uh, he ought to maybe go over and have a little chat with Mini and tell Mini, oh, good God damn it, let's go. Huh? Yeah, that'd be a good idea. Uh, either Henry or, or Haig to Mini. Maybe Haig yeah. more than Mini. Yeah, Mini more thinks very highly of Haig. Haig, but uh, rather than Henry, yep. because Mini is a little bit anti-Semitic. Yep, he is. And uh, suspicious. He, he is a good Catholic boy. He likes Hague. Yeah. But no, I don't think we, I really don't think there'll be any problem. I think it's going to be a little ripple. All the, the Marvin Calves will get all excited. Oh, screw that. Yeah, exactly. People don't, people don't follow him. I, I, God, I certainly heard that. But if that's one thing that this group that we've had in this week are unanimous on, you talk about any of the network commentators, Jesus, they, uh, they just, uh, you know, they regard him as the enemy. Um, I think that's one thing oh, we've done. Right. That's one thing we've done with middle America. We've destroyed their credibility with, that's right. with people. And, uh, Good. Okay, get that goddamn percentage up now. Yes, sir. I'll work on that this weekend. You and Scamman. Okay. We'll do it. Bye. Thank you, Mr. President.